Okay, so welcome. The, this particular weekend, I'm teaching a yoga psychology, yoga therapy training. And I have the joy of integrating my background in art therapy into the yoga methodology, which is a passion for mine, for me. And we're using the epic narrative of the Bhagavad Gita as a part of our studies here. Uh, so it's a pretty full weekend. The students are here in this class with you now. And I'm gonna frame this class to help benefit their training and also to give you a peek into on your yoga mat, what does it mean to have an awareness of the teachings in the Bhagavad Gita? Uh, so it's a metaphor. And so I'll give you some details about that as we get underway here. So let's start with a period of sitting quietly together. I'm very glad to see you coming in. So you can rest your hands in your lap. Let your eyes close. And bring your attention back home to the present moment, using your body and your breath as anchors to be here. as you sense your body in the present moment and the breath that's just simply coming and going. Notice the quality of your mind this morning for giving attention to that which is familiar, but also ever fresh. That which is tangible and also ever changing. And one of the teachings that happens in the very beginning of the Bhagavad Gita is that Arjuna asks for his teacher to be his guide and they go out to the middle of the battlefield to look at the surrounding experience. So with his teacher, he goes to the middle of what appears to be a battle between opposites, between opposing forces. So for a few moments, you can sense what it would mean for you to be in the middle, the middle path or the middle ground. How would you know when you're there? You might imagine parts of your life. I often use the analogy of a pendulum. So parts of your life on a pendulum, like we have action and inaction. We have creativity and stagnation. We have frivolity and we have seriousness. We have grasping and then we have not grasping. We have aversion and then non-aversion. So if you imagine this pendulum of your own mind between what look like opposites or opposing forces, how will you know when you're in the middle, when you've come to the center of that pendulum?
And please lengthen up through your spine as you imagine that quality of middle. You can think of the central channel we call Shushumna Nadhi in Sanskrit. Elongate your spine going both up and also rooting down. So Arjuna is asked in the middle of the battlefield to really see clearly who his opponents are, to see the opposing forces clearly. At first, he cannot see them clearly because he is very attached to those opposing forces. He's in a way very endeared by them. They are deeply familiar to him. So he's not at first able to look with clarity, with objectivity. It's his teacher who helps him to see more clearly. So with these little bits of um, power from the Gita, let's join the hands together. So you are bringing left and right to center when you do that. Again, lengthen up through your spine and try to sense the Shishumna Nadhi, the central channel. And we'll chant Asatoma Satgamaya. Let's begin. Om Asatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sargamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Om Asatoma Sargamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityodama Amritam Gamaya Shanti, 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 Hari Om, Shri Guru Pyo Namaha, Hari Om. With your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands, please open your eyes. And we're gonna do a little seated uh, breathing, twisting practice. So I'd like you to clasp your hands and take the backs of your hands to the top of your head. And then inhale to press up. So this is not unfamiliar to you. Exhale, press out. You can now close the eyes if you don't need to see what I'm doing. Clasp your hands at the small of your back. Inhale, open your shoulders, chest and heart, gaze up. Exhale, come to center, return your hands to Anjali Mudra. Repeating that, hands to the top of your head. Inhale, press up and reach up. We exhale, press out, like clearing the field of the mind. The field is called the Kurukshetra in the Bhagavad Gita. Clasp the hands. Inhale, roll your shoulders open. Raise your chest and heart, look up. And exhale, bring your palms to center, drawing in from left to right. Kurukshetra. The field is yours to do this inner battle with. Now interlace your fingers and raise the arms forward and up. Look up, please. 
And then exhale, rotate, twist to your right. Come to center, inhale to go up. Rotate to your left. Come to center, inhale to rise. Exhale, arms wide, clearing the field of the mind. Interlace your fingers at the small of your back. Inhale, roll your shoulders open, lift your chest, your heart open your throat. And exhale your hands to your heart, coming to the center. So just at this moment, ask yourself, how is your latitude? How wide is your latitude? And how centered do you feel? Now we'll balance the inhale and the exhale using ujjayi if you haven't been using that yet. So pace your breath so that your inhale and exhale are relatively equal, might be a little slower or longer than mine. Okay, so ujjayi inhale, breathing in. Twist right. Breathing in. Twist left. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Keeping the hands at the heart. Breathe in, Ujjayi. Lower your palms to your lap, breathing out, Ujjayi. Deeply relax. And you can ask again about your, your sense of your plumb line, your sense of being centered. And also the width of your latitude for like, accepting what lies in these seemingly opposing fields. Okay, take the left hand out to the side, place your right hand near to the floor or on the floor. And then inhale, raise up as you side bend to your right. Exhale, rise up, open your left arm, gaze to your right. Going right again, inhale, raise your left arm, side bend. Exhale, rise up, gaze to your right. Twice more, balancing your breath cycle. Breathe in. And breathe out. One more. Return to center, place your left hand at the ready, turn your right hand 
Palm face up, breathing in. And breathing out, balance your inhale with your exhale. Turn your head as far as it comfortably goes to your left. Breathing in. Breathing out. Twice more. Keeping the breath cycle balanced is a level of concentration and elegance, not a sense of coercion or manipulation. This is the last one. Rotate around to face forward. Place one hand in the lap of the other and rest your hands in your lap. And just check again the feeling of your plumb line. and your sense of the latitude inside. And I ask you to bring to mind now something that you know you have a strong preference for. Let's say it's um, a mental quality or an attitude. You have a strong preference for fill in the blank. And you have a strong aversion for fill in the blank. And imagine those two things sitting to your left and to your right that which you have a strong preference for. Like maybe you have a strong preference for a sense of quote unquote control and you have a strong dislike of quote unquote chaos. Just ask of yourself, doesn't have to be obvious, doesn't have to look like they're even connected. You have a strong preference for, you have a strong aversion for. Okay, and then having that in your heart and your mind, we're gonna come up to standing. Let me switch my camera. I need my glasses for that. I actually need prescription glasses. These are not them. Okay, please rise up to stand. I'll take my microphone and my water glass. Okay, we're gonna take a wide stance in Prasarata Parottanasana. Those of you who prefer to use blocks for this pose, you are totally welcome to do so. So taking a wide stance, press into both feet, and this is a symmetrical yoga posture, so also press equally down into both feet and hinge over the tops of your thighs. Lightly bring your fingertips to the floor or to your blocks. And now balancing your inhale and your exhale again, let's inhale, glide your spine forward. It's okay to have your eyes closed if you prefer, but glide forward like you're coming into cow pose. And then exhale and draw down, almost like you're going into a sort of cat pose spine, a deep flexion spine. Inhale, glide forward at the pace of your breath, balance your inhale with your exhale. And following that, your rhythm is gonna be your own. Let's do this four breath cycles more. Try to proceed with a sense of non-urgency. This is not a hasty activity. You are cultivating an inner condition for your mind and your body to experience yoga. So not rushing the process.
Last time, exhaling to bow towards the legs. And then rise up to your fingertips, whether your hands are on the floor or on the blocks, come up to two straight arms. And then walk your hands forward, like we often do. It looks a little bit like downward dog pose. But we're gonna go forward and then walk to the right, please. So like a half circle to your right. And as you walk to the right, stretch your left fingertips especially and draw your left hip back. So we've come over to the right side, but your emphasis is probably on breathing into the left hemisphere of the body. Press into the strength of your left leg also so your hips don't sashay to the left, they stay centered. You can imagine as you're breathing in, breathing into the central channel, but kind of fanning that open to the left. And then please walk your hands through center to go to the other side, still using the ujjayi breath. But as you're doing it, balance your in-breath with your out-breath. So that concentration continues for you, like a measure of elegance and commitment. Please enjoy one more breath cycle, balancing your inhale with your exhale. And as you complete that exhale, then walk your hands back to center. And back to your feet and up to your hips and rise up to standing. Please go heel toe, heel toe until you are centered. Step your feet into mountain pose. And for the sense of continuity, let's bring the one hand into the lap of the other hand and just hold steady for a moment and ask again, you know, what is the feeling in your plumb line? Not only the plumb line of the body, but really more importantly, the plumb line of your mind and your attention. And what is the experience you have of your latitude the width of your latitude. Consider for a moment that which you have a strong preference for to your left, how much does it pull you? And that which you have a strong aversion for to your right, how much does it activate you? Now let's step out to the jazz dance warm-up pose distance. So take a wide stance, turn your heels in and your toes out. Come on down. That light beam is crossing my face, but it's not actually bothering my eyes. I'll gaze down towards the floor. You can do the same. Press out through the inner thighs to your knees. And come back into balancing your inhale with your exhale, the ujjayi breath. The length is up to you, so it's even and you're not making yourself breathless, please. Once your breath is even, turn your left fingers down and in, and please twist to your right. And imagine you're, you're able to gaze to the field on your right, and over here, are the things that you have a strong preference for. And if I set it backwards the other time, I'll, I'll get it straight going forward. So to the right, is that what you have a strong preference for?
Notice when you bring that thing into your awareness, what happens to the quality of your breath or your mind? How stable are you able to be? How present and porous, not rigid, neither grasping nor becoming rigid, we hope. And rotate to center, turn your right fingertips in and down, take the left hand out to the side, and as you twist to your left, imagine on the left that which you have strong aversion for. It's something you might criticize, for example, in yourself or in others. And keeping the ujjayi breath steady, so you're just imagining you're gazing in this direction on the field. Notice what happens to the quality of your mind and the quality of your breath. And come around to center, fingers pointing out. Press into both heels and all ten toes, and please inhale, rise up to standing. And let's go heel toe, heel toe in. And standing on your left leg, please bring your right knee up and your right foot to tree pose. Bring your palms together. You want to tone the left outer hip and left outer thigh so that you're actually pressing into your right thigh and knee from the left outer hip. Make it strong. So your left thigh will press into your right heel. The right heel presses back or wherever your right foot happens to be on your leg. You know, lengthen out to the left inner thigh. Right inner thigh, excuse me. You sweep the arms up. Keep your gaze down. And then as you're reaching through your right thigh to the right, please open your left arm to the left and gaze out over your left fingers. And inhale, raise your left arm back to center. Steady your gaze on the floor. And let's exhale and step down with your right foot, please. Place your right heel and toes, energize your right outer hip and thigh, and let's change sides. So when you place your left heel against your right leg, wherever it happens to go for you, then tone your right outer hip, right leg muscles, right heel and toes, join your palms together. Lengthen from your upper inner left thigh out into your left knee. And inhale, raise your arms up. So notice the central channel now, that plumb line in which you are standing, even if you're wavering. And then open your right arm and turn your gaze to the right. Look out over your right fingertips. And use your in-breath to rise up to center. And then exhale and float your arms down and step your left foot down. And let's return to mountain pose. Place one palm in the lap of the other. If you can come as promptly as you're able to into your central channel, into that plumb line. asking of yourself now how wide is your latitude that to your right which you have a strong preference for
and that to your left, which you have a strong aversion for. Let's step out again. We're going to go to the distance that you would use for warrior two. And take a wide stance. Turn the left heel slightly out. Turn your right foot directly open. Please join your hands to your heart. Okay, Ujjayi, inhale, sweep your arms wide. And bend your right knee. Now as you gaze to your right, because you are experienced students, you actually can close your eyes, even though you're gazing out to the right. Close your eyes and visualize that which you normally have a strong preference for. And see, how can you be in relationship with that at this moment? possible, you can balance the length of your inhale with the length of your exhale. Turn your palms face up. Use an in-breath when you're ready to, to come back to center. Release and change sides. Breathing in, arms wide. Yeah, and breathing out, warrior two. So your practice likely has a meditative quality. I hope that it does. So as you gaze to your left, you're welcome to also close your eyes again. And imagine now on the left, that which you normally have a strong aversion for. Notice the quality of your mind in relationship to that which you otherwise have a habitual aversion for. When you next inhale, at your own pace, you're going to slide the palms back together, straighten your left leg, releasing from warrior two. Let's make the feet parallel and come back down to Prasarata Padottanasana. This time, as you come down, either hold a yoga strap or interlace your fingers at the small of your back. Roll your shoulders open. When the arms go overhead here, this might be one of the things that you have aversion for <laughs> on other days. So when the arms go overhead here, energize your legs, release your torso to the best of your ability, bend your knees if needed, and then squeeze your shoulder blades a bit towards each other and up towards your hips away from your neck. Lengthen the back of your neck so you have a sense that the base of your skull is not being crowded by the shoulder blades or your shoulders. Now root down into both legs, both heels and all ten toes. As you rise up to stand, bring your hips just slightly forward in line with your toes. And then curl the chest and heart up into a little standing back. Now let's exhale, release your arms, and let's go heel toe, heel toe, back to the palm line. And pausing here. Put one hand in the lap of the other. And just ask yourself, okay, what's happening now? 
does the plumb line feel? What is your experience with that which you have a strong preference for in the field on your right and that which you have a strong aversion towards in the field on your left? Please reach for two yoga blocks and place them at the front of your yoga mat, the short side of your mat being the front for the moment. And come up to mountain pose. I know that some of you who are in class this morning, you have a broken toe or an injured wrist or a difficult shoulder, or a difficult hip. So, of course, you modify as you need to, whatever is necessary. We adapt in our yoga practice just like we have to in daily life. Please bring your palms together at your heart. Return to the ujjayi breath and picture that central channel, which you're kind of widening the, the field of equanimity. We hope you're widening this field of equanimity and clarity. Steadiness is called sthitao, and we have that quality of sthitao inside. And using ujjayi, please inhale, raise your arms up overhead. And chair pose. Rising up, Ordva Hastasana. Uttanasana, keep the legs steady so you don't swing backwards to come forward. Inhale, glide forward, pacing the breath so inhale and exhale are pretty equal. Exhale, deep bow to your legs. Inhale, glide your heart forward, energize both legs. Keeping your right foot grounded with your exhale, take your left toes straight back. This is familiar to you. Rise to your crescent lunge, breathing in. Exhale, open the arms wide, and as you come down, interlace your fingers with the small of your back. And inhale to go to a little standing back bend here. Let's keep this back bend for the next several breath cycles. So if clasping your hands is really hard, what you can do instead is hold a yoga strap. Well, if you're wearing a wrist brace, you might put the wrist in the loop of the strap and hold the other side of the strap with the fingers that are free. Both shoulders press back. Raise your heart, please. Yeah, beautiful. And with an exhale, release your arms and shoulders, and then inhale, raise both arms up overhead. Let's exhale, come wide and forward and down. Lightly touch the two blocks, and please inhale, step your left foot forward, glide your heart forward. Exhale, Uttanasana, press into the blocks to deepen the tone in your lower belly. Inhale, glide forward, move your breath and your body smoothly together. Okay, right toes back. Inhale to rise. And as you're coming up, put your tailbone down. Try to sense you're standing in the plumb line there. Sweep your arms wide as you exhale. Change the interlace of your fingers this time, or use your yoga strap around your wrists as needed. Inhale to glide up, shoulders back. You can imagine that you've come to the center of a field, a battlefield actually. You've asked for your teacher and you have to open yourself up to your teacher's wisdom.
which also means releasing some of what you think of as your smarts or your cleverness. Release your arms, please, as you exhale, and then float them up as you inhale. And exhale, let's go wide, forward, and down. And inhale, float your right foot forward. Exhale for a deep bow to Uttanasana. The inhale, rise up, Ordva Hastasana. Balance your in-breath with your out-breath. Nice job. And exhale, hands down to your heart. Bend both knees, keep your right foot planted, step your left foot back to a, a shorter distance. It's the distance we use for a pose called Parsvottanasana. So the back foot's going to be angled so that your toes are more forward than they are sideways, and both hips can face forward this way. If your stride's too long, your hips will become skewed. So the distance from front to back is to let your hips be right here. Inhale, raise your arms up. Great. Exhale, energize both legs. Go wide, forward, and down. You're going to do your best to keep your right leg straight. So the blocks are there for your support to make the floor closer, but you can also press into the blocks to tone your inner belly a little bit more. Let's inhale, glide forward through the heart now, please. Rise up to your fingertips. And exhale to bow deeply towards your legs. Again, inhale to glide forward. And exhale for a deep bow towards your right leg on the front, left leg on the back. One more time, glide forward. And one more time for a deep bow towards your legs. Now reach back to interlace your fingers. The pose does become a balanced pose there. Roll your shoulders open. Press from your hips down into your legs. Slowly rise up to standing. Keep rooting your heels and toes. Keeping your hips centered, lift your pubic bone, lift your navel, lift your heart, roll your collarbones wide, open your throat, lift your gaze. Squeeze the shoulders and the arms back, please. And then exhale, bring your torso upright and step to mountain pose, join the palms. So you have one hand in the lap of the other. Bend both knees, take your right toes back. So not the longest stride possible, but the stride that you would use for Parsvottanasana, back foot at a slight angle. Okay. Good, energize the legs, inhale to go up. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, exhale wide, forward, and down. Inhale, glide forward through your heart. Let the breath move your body from the inside. At your pace for balancing your inhale with your exhale, please do this three breath cycles more. Balancing your breath doesn't mean that you'll have 
the longest possible breath cycle and then you're getting breathless means you have a balanced inhale with a balanced exhale appropriate to the yoga pose that you're doing. When you finish that third one and you've bowed over your left leg, reach back to clasp your hands, roll your shoulders open, and then begin pressing from your hips down into your legs, down into your heels and toes. When your torso comes upright, lift your pubic bone, tone your right butt muscles, lift up through your navel, your heart, your collarbones, your eyes. Squeeze the shoulders back. Listen for the openness you can create when we think of opening up to the wisdom of a higher teacher. And then bring your torso upright and with an in-breath, step your right foot forward and place your palms one in the lap of the other. Try to sense the plumb line that you stand in. Now, if you bring to mind that to your right, which you normally have a strong preference for, what is the feeling in your mind, your relationship with that? And then to your left, that which you normally have a strong aversion for. What is the relationship you have there at this moment? And now we're going to take the left foot back again. So same distance to stride. And I'm going to ask you to put your block so that it's on the flat and then a tall on top of that one. Okay, wrap the right arm around behind the small of your back. Roll your right shoulder back, please. Widen the right collarbone to the best of your ability. Okay. And raise your left arm forward and just begin keeping the hips centered. So you're not gonna be rotating from here, but begin to reach your left arm forward, right shoulder back. Left arm forward, right shoulder back. Let the reach of the left arm bring you forward enough that you are coming forward with your whole torso. Roll your right shoulder back, left arm forward, right shoulder back. Keep the legs steady so you should not feel that your left hip is falling forward towards the blocks, even though the torso is coming forward. When you get to that appropriate distance for yourself, then you're going to place your left hand and palm on the tall block and rotate to your right. So press your left arm firmly down so that your rotation is supported by the downward pressure of your left arm and the stabilization of your right leg from your right hip into your right heel. Then add your right shoulder drawing back, drawing back. And then slowly unwind, gaze down, root into your legs, reach your left arm forward as you rise up and relax both arms. Okay, step your left foot forward to the outside of the block and then take the right foot back. Maybe this is a pose you have a version for. Take the left arm around behind the small of your back. Press the left shoulder back and widen your collarbone right here. There's an inclination for the shoulder to kind of push forward, which is very understandable. So do your best to press that back. Reach your right arm forward. You're into your right heel and as you reach the right arm forward, let that start rotating your upper torso to the left. 
Going to keep your right hip where it started so the right hip is not falling forward to the blocks. And as you come forward and you sort of eyeball it where your right hand is going to find that tall block, then press down. And roll your left shoulder back, but prioritize the strength of your right arm, the downward arm, and the strength of your left leg. And then add, like a little seasoning or a garnish, add the left shoulder. And then as you exhale, start unwinding, press into the strength of both legs, reach your right arm forward so you rise up, and then you can relax both arms and step your right foot forward to the outside of the blocks. Now we are going to do Parvita Trikonasana, like the, that's the name of the pose. So step your left foot back, this time we will be twisting and opening the arm. We're also going to start it in an unusual way. I know we have you higher up on the blocks, we will do a little lower down also. So for this beginning, take your arms wide. So imagine you're standing in this plumb line. You have to your left, that which you have aversion for. To your right, that which you have strong preference for. We could say craving, desire, grasping. We could say aversion, resistance, <laughs> condemnation. So breathing in. And begin to rotate. Notice that you're turning towards that which you have a strong preference for. Keep the left hip back as you reach your left arm forward. So the left hip doesn't fall forward towards the blocks. And as you're reaching the left arm forward, there's going to be a natural moment where you place your left hand on the tall block. And now start pressing down into your left arm to support your twist to the right. And you're gazing in the direction of that which you have a strong preference for. So notice that experience. I know you're using your imagination right now. You now rooting from your hips into your heels, begin to rise up to standing, raise your left arm. And then as you unwind, open back out to the horizon. Please step your left foot forward and your right foot back. Stretch out to the latitude, the horizon. Imagining that on your left, which you have your aversion towards, begin to rotate, observing your mental attitude. Reach your right arm forward, but keep your right hip steady. So the right hip doesn't come forward towards the blocks. It tips over the top of your thigh, but you're not actually bringing your right pelvis forward. Rotate to your left, use the strength of your right arm. And imagine now the field to your left where that strong aversion is, the things that you have opposition for. And rooting from your hips down through your legs into your heels, keep the twist as you ride. So you're going to rise and derotate. And then float your right foot forward, mountain pose. Place one hand in the lap of the other. If you're in the middle of the battlefield, you have to ask for your teacher's wisdom to come. You're facing these seemingly opposing forces. Okay, now we're going to come down to take a seat. And what I would request is that you have a blanket to sit on and you can keep your blocks. Let's make the blanket so your hips are going to feel 
supporting enough. I like this little trifold that I do with my blanket. Even though I sit on the very front edge of it, the trifold, the height of it is like just behind my sitting bones. So I sit closer to the floor that way. There's actually less blanket underneath me. And then you can place a block to the left and a block to the right. Let's start with whatever your position is most comfortable for this. And then I'll be asking for a specific which ankle is where. But for the time being, take your hands out over your knees. Close your eyes and picture again, you are a warrior or you can say a warrior goddess if you prefer or uh, goddess if you just wanna be that or a warrior if that's all you wanna be. But picture yourself having this, it is this inner battle, they say in the Gita, on the Kurukshetra, the field of your life. And you've come to the middle of the field to survey the circumstances. And we have these forces in us. One force has strong preference and one force is strongly oppositional. And come back into your ujjayi breath now. Place the tip of the tongue behind the top two teeth. As the breath begins to deepen, let's take the block to the right. Turn your left palm face up and inhale to come up. And walk your block out. Do your best to keep your left hip grounded, please. Root into your left hip, your left sitting bone, even as you're reaching to your right. Raise your left arm up to the ceiling and using your left lower belly, exhale, glide back up to the center. Now raise your right arm and side bend to your left. And keeping your right hip grounded, that comes from inside your, your right hip joint, but also your intention and your right lower belly, right lower back. And breathing in, tone your Right low belly with the exhale, raise your right arm and glide yourself back to center. Okay, now let's bring the right knee up and the left leg straight out like this, Marichyasana. So now I'm gonna ask you to get specific about when you're gazing to the right. You've chosen something for yourself. I don't have to know what that is. Only you have loyalty and honesty with yourself. So this strong preference, this thing that you might find, at times it's problematic because it causes craving, clinging, grasping, desire, uh, the lack of satiation or the hungry ghosts, we sometimes call them. So consider that specific thing that you're working with as we do this pose, please. So keep your right hand around your right shin, raise your left arm up. And then exhale, rotate to your right. Place your left hand around your right shin. Sweep your right palm up. And keeping your right hand face up, so your palm is up, rotate back with your right thumb. And as you gaze out over your right shoulder, even if the eyes are closed, as you gaze in this direction, just imagine for how long has this kind of preference or craving 
desire for how long has it been there? How far back might it go in the footsteps of your life? And when you sense how far back it goes, notice that a part of you has had this clinging or preference or desire for a certain amount of time, a part of you that has this very strong preference. And when you exhale, bring your right hand back to your heart and unrotate from your pose. Let's take the right leg out to Dandasana. So you can say like, a part of me has a very strong inclination, a strong preference, a strong craving. And this part of me has had that craving or preference for a certain amount of time. And bring the left knee in. Raise your right arm up. And cross your right hand to your left knee. Open your left palm and rotate to your left. Yeah. And as you gaze to your left, imagining now the part of you that has a strong opposition a strong aversion to something, you can think of it as something specific in yourself or in others. And you might ask yourself on, on this side, just as on the first side, for how far back, how long does it seem to go back in time over the footsteps of your life? And how open can you be to that experience right now? Right, so to the part of you that has had this long held or certain amount of time in opposition and aversion, how open can you be to that part right now? And then fold your left hand back over to your heart and let's come to Dandasana. Acknowledging that there's a part of you that has had strong aversion. And please bring your left foot and left knee out to the side. Now, for some of you, it's going to make sense to put your block under your knee right there. For others, that may not be needed. It depends on how comfortably your knee comes down to the floor or if it doesn't come to the floor, which still qualifies you to do yoga. Place your other block here, and it might be on the tall, might be medium, might be small, you'll see in a moment. Can you please raise your left hand up? And then exhale, reach your left arm forward <clears throat> as you pull the right shoulder back. So right shoulder back, right shoulder back, the left arm. As you go forward, you're gonna find a place where your movement ends and you can cross the back of your left hand to the outside of your right foot or shin or ankle. As you twist to your right now, reach for your block and place it where it's close enough to you and far enough back on your mat that as you press down with your right hand, you can roll your right shoulder back for the twist. And gaze back over your right shoulder, your right elbow. And let's just imagine it again, the part of you that's had this really strong preference or desire, sometimes in the form of clinging. How far back might that go? And what is your sense of it in this moment? As if you're watching a version of yourself, a part of you, traveling back on the footsteps in time, how far back does it go? And 
And root down into your right hand. Raise your left arm up, untwist. And release your left arm. Let's change the legs, please. All right leg into Janus Yasasana. Raise your right arm up. Left arm and shoulder can be behind you. Now imagine the part of you that has strong opposition over here on the left. And coming forward with your right arm, roll your left shoulder back, left shoulder back and back. And there'll be a place where your forward movement stops and you can place the back of your right hand around the outside of your left foot or ankle or shin. Bring the other block in through your left hand. And gaze back over your left shoulder and elbow. You can imagine the version of you that has this part that has strong opposition, a strong resistance to something. How far back can you imagine those footsteps going? The habit of aversion. And reach your right arm forward. Please rise up, unwind. And then releasing, let's put the left foot in to Siddhasana. And take your hands again back out over your knees. And then one hand in the lap of the other. You come back to like a, the central aspect of you. That in you which is able to witness or observe or kind of take in the perspective of the part of you that has strong preference, the part of you that has strong aversion or opposition. Please release your hands and let's take this blanket that we're sitting on and open it up, please. Okay, so take the blanket long like this and then fold it in half, length to length, twice. Place it down, your yoga mat. You're gonna put one block under your head. The other block is not needed. You could also choose to have your bolster under your knees or your sandbag on your thighs or both of those things, it's up to you. When you lie down, you have to lie down before you can put that block in place because it's based on the length of your spine. And when you lie down, then take this block on the flat setting, so flat is like this, and place it under your blanket, right up close to your neck. So you've really got this support for the cervical spine. And your gaze is gonna be down towards your heart and you can take the legs out. And turn your palms face up, which is a gesture of receptivity for the body. And let your gaze go down and in, looking from the wisest aspect of you. Let your attention come down into your center, your plumb line, recognizing that there's a field to your right, there's a field to your left. They seem to be in opposition. Right now you're gonna go inward and practice resting and integrating.
So keeping your gaze down and in so your mind can be in a place of refuge. Allow your body to integrate, to renew. But recalibrate. keeping your primary wise attention inward and downward. You're not analyzing, you're simply resting, integrating. Invite the mental dust bunnies to keep fading as you integrate. Allow your body to be deeply at rest for the recalibration to happen on your behalf. And keeping all five senses and the habits of the mind 
deeply quiet and we'll rest for just one more minute. I'd like you to imagine the mental dust bunnies have relaxed around you, they are quieted. Sense within your body and your heart, both you, the aspirant or the student, and your inner wisdom, your inner teacher. And for that which lies to your right, where you have strong preference or desire. Listen for how much equanimity you can have about that part of you now. And that which lies to your right, where you have strong aversion, what might your inner wisdom say in that direction? Gently wiggle your toes and fingers. Please bend one knee at a time. Roll down to your right side. And come to your seat, your meditation seat. Begin with your hands out over your knees. And then one hand in the lap of the other. We know in the Bhagavad Gita, the, the qualities of the sattvic heart represent, recommend non-grasping, non-hoarding, non-possessiveness, the absence of greed, the absence of clinging. Also, the absence of wrath, the absence of harm. The absence of stealing. The absence of lying. And the fullness of compassion, the fullness of equanimity, generosity, service, radiance, forgiveness, gentleness, humility,
and stay in your plumb line like your T steeping. And sensing the plumb line within you. Now make an internal memory of this plumb line, this place of refuge, hopefully clarity and wisdom, a place of vitality. And imagine this memory, a body memory that you're installing to have, not only simmering right now, but to stay with you. And please bring your hands together at your heart. Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste. Thank you for being here. How are you feeling?